current cost of living in Ghana. I want from the home that was raised, I want that. That was the day. I spent 500 Ghana CDs at a restaurant, and by the time they added the taxes and everything, I was at 700 and something CDs. <laughs> <laughs> the next oh. time you guys see us, we'll be sitting in the US. Why not tell you if you in Ghana and you're looking for an Uber, not tell you're not gonna get AC, okay? They're gonna roll down the windows, it doesn't matter how much they charge you. I'll snatch your phone. Hey guys, it's your girl Juliana, aka Driveway Juliana at Honda of Tomball. Today I am in Ghana and I get the opportunity to be interviewed by Oforu Wadudu. And I'm excited because guess what? We're going to talk about everything. The expenses in Ghana, how expensive it is to live in Ghana, and basically like the excitement also in Ghana. Make sure you like our channel, make sure you subscribe, yes. and then also make sure you share and comment in the comment section. You know what? And she'll give you the content that you've been looking for. Okay. There you have it. You see how I'm working tirelessly to get you quality people on this channel. Yes. Mm -hmm. And after all those hard work, you will subscribe. So <laughs> I don't know what to do. So guys, for my previous video, or this video, I want to interview random people that means about the cost of living in Ghana. Okay. And my last video I interviewed an entrepreneur today. I'm going to interview um, a professional. Okay. And the good news is that she doesn't even live here in Ghana. I just want her to compare. Right. Yeah, the cost of living as in from wherever she's coming from to Ghana, and also previously she comes to Ghana also. So, um, last year and now, has there been any difference? Um, she has also traveled across Ghana since she came back. Um, she can also do a comparison between Accra and, and my village, exactly. Kipkis. And so, um, just stay tuned for all the gifts coming yeah. up. First and foremost, let me introduce like what I do. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm actually into car sales in the US. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm a sales consultant. Mm -hmm. um, I've been, I was, sent to, I was sent to America when I was like 11. So I've been living abroad for like over 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. But I do come to Ghana a lot because you know, my mom is in Ghana. So we do visit, you know, I do come and visit. Um, but my main country, my main country, because <laughs> no Ghana, I said yeah, country. Yeah. But all fairness, eh? Eh, you man am here now, right? When I me back Ghana, no, I decided to visit my country, visit it. Um, all fairness, eh? A Honda store, me call Honda store, and me call it just to see like how our almost sales department is. Yeah. But me call home, no, like conversation I'm really sales people they having now. I realized say, hey. And then they made an easy crowd because they said, I said, I'm going to buy a ton of cars. I said, yeah, the amount of income that I'm making, I don't think it's going to make this income. So what I said, it's, you know, so I made it also, I made it share, I'm going to say, economy is what I'm like, hey, how, yeah, how would the person survive? Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. So how did you get into the marketing field? Was it by chance? Did you go for that, or is like you're passionate about that? What happened? Okay, so when I was sixteen, the first job I got was a sales job. Mm -hmm. I was um, I was working at a coffee shop. It's called um, Starbucks. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why I was working at, at the age of 16. Um, I got my first job working at Starbucks. And when I was working at Starbucks, I realized how good I was because the customers just loved me. But I also would say I had a few jobs. I, I worked at Starbucks through college. I was working at Walmart as a um, sales associate. Then I got promoted to customer service rep. And then um, eventually when I graduated from college, I decided to, initially my goal was to go to law school, okay? I wanted to be a lawyer, you know, every every guy in, either a lawyer, doctor, or mess, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now IT is like booming. But one thing I would say is a lot of people do not value sales. Mm -hmm. They yeah, don't know they how are, much. They're funny, but they underestimate. At the, at, yeah, let's put like that. They underestimate sales. Like they don't know how good sales is. Like, Sales can get you the same income that doctors making, a lawyers making, you know, or even more. Yeah. But once I graduated from college, um, I ended up getting a job as an insurance agent. So, and that I was really good at it. And I realized I'm like, every time I try to apply for a job in my field, my friends, my one of my very good friends always said like, why are you like even you know you are really good at what you do like you are good in sales you should try a sales position mm -hmm. and I never really took him serious until like when I did my insurance job I was like okay you know what maybe I should do this shot but I would say I went to college I have my master's in psychology and that actually also helps me okay. more to like understand. when it comes to to understand yeah, the people yes. that I'm dealing with yeah. and so eventually um, I came to Ghana for two years came to live here for two years because I was going through like some personal issues and when I went back I was like you know what let's just get back here so I got to car sales and for the last six years yeah, I'm a exactly. sales person you know yeah. selling 40 plus cars in a month hey. and it just you know it just be going you know so after yeah. after video definitely I'll get some classes for <laughs> yeah. Cause this year it was here for this year yes <laughs> we know yeah. agree or we know we're we're not not nobody park. And maybe you see, I'm looking for side hustles. So mm -hmm. I do some training on sales and marketing. Now let's get into the real juice. Okay. So when you're in Ghana, do you rent or you own? Okay. So living situation. So when I'm in Ghana, my parents are at home, but we live pretty far. Mm -hmm. So when I want to just enjoy, <laughs> we come to Ghana. You can't say that you're going to enjoy if you're just going to be in your house, right? Um, so I try to always like either rent, get like an Airbnb or book like an apartment in the middle of a crowd mm -hmm. so that I'm able to like maneuver or you know go to places that I can really enjoy. So I'm not traveling home late. We know how the driving situation is in Ghana. The you know. terrible Yeah, the terrible So I, I hate driving. I hate going like going home late at night. Mm -hmm. You know because of either I'm over or anything like that. So I don't want to put that my parents in that position. But, Guys, for yeah. the most part, Ghana is safe. It's safe, but regardless right. of where you are, mm -hmm. it's not wise to be uh, traveling late. Back yeah, late, late night. night. Yeah. And in Ghana, the roads are no good. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to harm you, you would find it difficult to navigate because there's a lot of and there's not too many people on the road. Yeah, exactly. So it's hard for yes. Let's put like this: it's not too many people on the road at like late night. Yes. So if something was to happen. Who's yeah, gonna, yeah, you know, find yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's why. Yeah, you know, the main, the past. It's yeah. on the, it's in the East Lagos yeah, area, yeah. all in the center of Akash, I rather yeah, come yeah, closer. Yeah, the center of Akash. Yeah. So when you live at the outskirts, it's unwise yeah, to, to be traveling at least. Yeah. All right, so what do you think of the cost of rent? You've been doing Airbnbs and renting a part for the most part, mm -hmm. right? Um, how do you find the rent? Um, okay, so if I was comparing it to maybe um, America, mm -hmm. I would say that it might be a tad bit cheaper, but I also um, look at it in the aspect of like the average guardian. Mm -hmm. Well, the average guardian, well, the average guardian probably won't rent, but like, well, well, yeah, 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 it's market. Yeah, but you know, will someone that probably don't have that, you know, funds be able to sustain? Okay, but I'm also asking because you travel mm -hmm. international. Well. True. Um, do you think that with the same amount you can get better elsewhere? I think I can. Yeah. I think I can. 
But at the same time, like, I do believe that, okay, so for instance, I'll give you a perfect example. When I visited, like, Paris, right, the amount that I paid was for, like, a whole week is what I paid for, like, three days here. Right, so, and it was, it was a nice hotel, you know, it was really, like, nice hotel, but at the same time, like, in Ghana, I'm like, uh, now, one thing I'll say is, for the amount of money they charge it, right, they, they give you restrictions on what you can do at their place, like, you have to turn off the light, you can't have the AC on when you leave in, out the room, you know, the Wi-Fi is limited, so, I know, I'm not saying every place, but the place I have stayed, like the Wi-Fi is limited, so you can use it for texting, browsing a little bit, no download, like no streaming and stuff wow. like that. So to me, it's inconvenient sometimes mm -hmm. because I work. While I'm here, I've been working from yeah. home, so the data like this is it's so slow. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well I'm paying like 117 a night, mm -hmm. so and I still don't have access to all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that makes it a little bit like. Maybe I should start my own Airbnb. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's because like, a lot of people complain, like even yeah. the cost of houses and buildings in Accra yeah. is more expensive than some, you know, first class countries. And it doesn't yeah. make sense why. That the house is like cars. I went to the Honda store trying to, you know, see how much a, a Honda Pilot EXL, like the cost, it was double what like that what we sell it for. So I went and I checked and I was like, ah, we sell for 44000 Even if I was to ship the car here, I will still save more money. I went and I looked at a Honda Pilot EXL. It's selling for $85,000. Like, that is not a market for an average guy. <laughs> to even be able to afford the car, like, 85000 is like double the price. Yeah. You know, so. But I guess it's the economy. Yeah. All right, let's move to transportation. Okay. So transportation. Uber. Um, I don't use my parents like driver, so I just get myself an Uber because I don't know where I'm going. I just let them know where I'm going, <laughs> and then that's it. But Uber, like I, I probably Uber a lot. But one thing I'm good at when I do come to Ghana, if I find one good Uber driver, I just book them. I just stick with that person and I just book them the whole time I'm here. So it makes it easier, you know. You build friendship. Um, you know, you build connection, networking, and if you that person is good to you, you just come back and you just, you know, keep requesting for that person and you save actually money that way too. So you haven't had any Uber driver for no. You don't have any oh, Uber stories. Not not this not this year. Not this year. But I'll say this. <laughs> I remember two years ago I came to Ghana with my cousin and we took an Uber. Now, I would say one thing I hate about Ghana Uber system is the fact that, <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to list one. And I list, I'm going to Uber with this side. They have one that says comfort. The comfort is newer cars with AC. Yeah. One that I tell you, if you in Ghana and you're looking for an Uber, not to say you're not going to get AC, okay? They're going to roll down the windows. It doesn't matter how much they charge you. They're going to roll down the windows. They have their own rules. They have their own rules yes. from what Uber is giving them. Yeah. So, Madam, if I find that my brother, then they will move from her because they will not roll down the window. But this particular Uber driver, um, my cousin, I brought my cousin, it was her first time in Ghana. And so we took an Uber. The first Uber that we took didn't have AC. So, you know, she was a little hot. I'm used to it because I come to Ghana all the time. So we end up going to the place, ate, came back, and then we requested for another Uber. I literally sent a message to the first person that I sent to the Uber and I said, do you have AC? Because it's a comfort. You just have AC. And he said no. So of course, you know, the, the request went to Well, the request went to another person. Okay. And then I sent a message again. I asked the person, Do you have AC? And they did not respond. So I assume you have AC. Why does that get there? And we sit in the corner, I'm like, oh boss, they my AC kakra. Nah, never for say mini AC will be my AC. I'll be my charge your money. I'm like, so I already paid for the service. It's yeah. comfort. Comfort charges you like, I think like eight Ghana cities more mm. than the standard yeah. one. Yeah. And so I was like, well, if you don't give us AC, I'm gonna report you to Uber. Mm -hmm. So eventually, you know, he didn't go down the, he didn't give us the AC. I said, okay, well, I'm not gonna pay you the price for comfort because you didn't give us comfort. 
I'm like, say, me tiao, me tiao, because we requested for comfort. You didn't give us the service. Why should I pay you for the service that I did not get? I'm not paying you for the service you did not get. I'm not paying you for the service I did not get. What happened? I was touching my phone. And I'm in the best of blues. We say, well, I never trust our back to Nibble Bema. Oh, I like, I really went off on the guy. Like, it took a guy, another guy to come and separate us. I had him in the chokehold because I take self defense, okay? I take a self defense class, so you're not going to come and bully me. But in the West, yeah. I took an Uber to the airport. And when we got there, I had a discount, right? This guy took a longer route. Just to charge you more. Then he was extremely rude. He wasn't nice. Yeah. But not Yeah. No do you make you not to train or buy and he went to park at the other side. <laughs> and when he was done, <laughs> my friend and me say, Ah, I'm here. The app is saying, Yeah, by yeah, location, yeah. but I can't see where are you I say, Ah, me who, but I walked into the street. I say, Me who, man, but my friend was walking majestically from the shop. I didn't see your no. I saw what's not happening, my son don't buy. And I said, Or me, me who grew and then she grabbed me. You know, someone I not 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 a boat na me me fire boat no we need to see how far price no a was no over that we do na apple as a shot and as a and it depend on how the person treats me you do it I'll just give you they do a fire they do not listen I feel like that but I don't know for some reason when this guy said it I also waited to check on my phone when I checked there was a different also on my phone the price no so oh no I'm surprised. I'm surprised now you want me up. You found me proud. It wasn't like this. Yeah. But me too, you're not sure. There's no trouble. I'm going to pay what is asking me to yeah. pay. But when you can't check, you say, me too, they all will happen. Because yeah. my family, yeah, one of my faults, they all will happen. Yeah. It's in me, Mr. I'm in the end, I'm still down. Yeah. Now, the price is more. Discounts are more. And I I because Adriano is saying one thing, and you are also like as for Kumasi, I'm over, I'm over the Uber. I would prefer yeah. taking a taxi because I have so many terrible well, experiences. Both yeah. Uber, both, all of them trash. Oh far, Obi to me be sad. Say oh why he? No, no negotiating. Guy, no had he known said. Yeah. 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 So I buy it, I say, I just because it can be frustrating. You don't want to do the back and forth no, with no, the no. taxi driver. Yeah, and That's I just why you them. take the Uber. Yeah. Then now you take an Uber and then you still have to do the back and forth. Then what's the point? That doesn't make yeah. sense. Do you understand? And then also when like from the airport to the house, when I take Uber from the airport to the house, they already add the cost of uh, 
the ticket team. Yeah. They already are tasted it. Oh sure, I will move. It tells you. Yeah, yeah. Now when yeah. they get to the location, like they want all, to touch yeah. They want to touch you extra. But sometimes no, she may be able to make me one not punish you. From the airport to the north, sometimes they pay as much as 75, 80, yes. 85. Yeah. Why? Because they pay for it. So they give, they've added extra charges to it. Because on a normal day, I can't go to the me on the way in yeah, but I think I think that Uber Uber um if you know this video tries to Uber Uber Ghana you guys need to do better. It's not just Uber Uber and both both. I'm Uber gonna is. focus on Uber because that's why I really like yeah, AI. Yeah. Right? But I think that Uber Ghana needs to do better in yeah. searching when it comes to the people that are applying to drive Uber. They need to make sure the cars like that the services that they're providing has to match the price that they're driving. Yeah. Because someone will come and pick you up and they are, you know, supposedly Uber Comfort is supposed to be newer cars with AC, but sometimes the cars that come, it has, it's not even a newer car, it's like 1999 car, and the AC don't even blow, it's hot. So I think that Uber Ghana needs to do better when it comes to making sure like the, you know, it, they need to get valid. And like evidence on the cars that the drivers are using for the They have to respect the conditions yeah. and look out for the customers. Of course. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So on the on that part. Mm-hmm. Alright, so what do you think about the cost in general? Cost, cost of the, transportation. Cost of transportation. I'm gonna be biased, okay? Like cost of transportation wise, I feel like it is cheaper. But again, like I said, the average Ghanaian <laughs> if I'm but comparing, guys, if, I'm from, this side, I... <laughs> if I'm comparing to like the Ubers I take when I'm in America, definitely like the, the all together is expensive, like it's cheaper here. Mm-hmm. But if somebody came to Ghana and they don't have the finances right, would they be able to afford it? No, because it's it's expensive, like for the average thing. Because somebody can submit to them for let me tell you, maybe 20, 15 cities, right? Mm-hmm. To where I'm going. But if I right now, it's like more, mm-hmm. right? So, but again, like I said, I'm biased on that part, transportation wise, you know, I think that if somebody is a foreigner coming in, yes, if they have their finances right, they can afford the the ride. But the average, let me say the average Ghanaian cannot afford it. Mm-hmm. Cannot afford like the Uber rides. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they might have to put a little bit of in the mix. Yeah. Um, so, in general, when you say the Ghana is expensive or for you, it's reasonable? Some things are very expensive. Some things are very expensive, like I said, like cars, like housing. If you're trying to purchase like a property, it's very expensive compared to, you know, because the amount of money that people are paying for. Even a condo here can buy. A, you can get a house, you know, abroad, um, or build your own house, right? Um, lands are expensive. Um, food wise, me, I like street food though. I don't like restaurant like that because restaurant is expensive. Yeah. Right now, you go to Ghana, you go buy food, you spend five hundred Ghana cities, hundred Ghana. Yeah, yeah. In hundred Ghana cities, you know, I was spending the crap on um, yana, yeah. like, yam chips, you know. So. Um, if you're trying to eat in a restaurant, I mean, it's very. If you want dining. fine dining, papa, and keep in mind in Ghana, they will charge you. Fine dining will charge you NHIL taxes, which is national health insurance taxes <laughs> on your food. They charge you. Um, that's one thing I was a little bit confused. So I went to go eat. I think there's tourism. There's a tourism taxes that you pay. There's a get fund, which is supposed to go for the needy, like education fund, mm-hmm. for the needy taxes that you pay when you go buy food. Taxes. And then you have the COVID taxes and COVID no crime. You gave me a lot Yeah, no. COVID no. You said Jimbo, but still not. I do a yeah. COVID taxes. And then you pay back. Like, by the time I spent 500 Ghana cities at a restaurant, and by the time they added the taxes and everything, I was at 700 and something cities. Like, that's ridiculous. That's like two hundred cities more in taxes alone. 
that's ridiculous. I, I, I feel like you know, I don't like restaurants that have hidden, I have hidden, 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 hidden taxes. Yeah, do you understand? Because um, when you're going for fine dining, I mean, they don't charge cheap, right? So I think most people would plan or have a budget. So at least you know, if it's not tax inclusive, you should let the person know state it clearly in your menu. So as you are doing your ordering, you can say, you know, you can gauge and then maybe put a little on the side, but if you want to have a call, majority of the time, you know, it's already included in yeah. the, uh-huh. mm-hmm. but if you want to have taxes, they don't tell you that now, we did you read now, hey, I don't know why people say, I better say, I better know then, it's way over, and I don't think say, like, that is honest. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? so I don't think that I'll come. Yeah. Yes, I don't know about others. Hey, everyone back I said to me to my young call. We can afford it. We just say like even to me some of the taxes you, even if don't make sense. Yeah. 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 You can't always go you can't go to Paris. I'm coming, you can't go to Paris every month. You can't go to the yeah. Kapum. The two two said you can't go there every month. Can you go there? You still have to go. Aha, uh-huh. so if me to me, I'm a baby, but I'm going to flash in there, I'm going to and I want the experience. I yeah. have to do that. That's yeah. the more reason why there shouldn't be hidden taxes. Yeah. Because I'm sorry, I'm a baby. That's true. I'm a baby. 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 I'm a I mean, I mean, I mean, like I said, I'm not even gonna lie. I was shocked when I saw those taxes. I was like, eh? Like, I was very confused. I'm like, why am I paying taxes on health insurance that does not apply to me? Yeah. To me, that's something that, you know, this supposed to be taken out of the employee's check, not from the, you know, the customer that's buying the food. I was surprised that they were charging educational funds. Like, I feel like educational yeah. fund, there should be educational yeah, fund yeah, taxes. Yeah, like education, that's, that should be like a donation. Like, it should be something that they request if you like to donate to the educational fund, but not on a tax that I'm supposed to pay on. And um, also, like, that, like the regular tax, I understand, like food, America, I hope so they're going to pay taxes yeah. on it. So that's understandable, but COVID taxes, all that unnecessary taxes is, why is it doesn't make sense. Businesses are paying taxes already, so why am I in charge for those taxes? Like, that don't make sense. So I keep saying, so that, like, the little number of, the few Ghanaians that are into, mm. they are really in the system, but yeah. there's a lot of informal sector. And, like, all the buildings, we are teaching the best, you know, yeah. because I don't think an informal person is going to find that. I mean, for one person, I'm going to vote this day. Who is your task? Oh, yeah, corporate worker. You pay taxes and all those things. All the area, and we are just a handful compared to the large population. And all the taxes, they are to trust, right? I'm telling you, and that's how I feel. The the government finds any opportunity. Any opportunity. Anything that you could think of for people, they are taxing. Yeah. 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 So anyway, let's move on. Um quickly just run us run us through your expenses for the month. Okay, you're not getting married in the month. Yeah. So far, like what you spend on Media Jan and the Pajan Tino the by the Jan and I'm the music cat it. Um if you're like renting or you know Airbnb's whatever, um, and then also rides. Um, I'll say it's okay for instance like Uber rides. I probably have spent a little over maybe like three, like three thousand Ghana cities between like my village. Um, Offense, well, my bill doesn't have override, it's more like taxi. Um, but like you know, booking because it was a lot of us going to booking to go to my village for my uncle's funeral, and then okay, my media has been free, 
and I cried alone. I've been in Accra for since Monday, Tuesday, between Tuesday to Saturday, to Saturday. I have probably spent, yeah, a little bit roughly about like 2,000. Kind cities and just driving around. Driving, yeah, it just over rides. Um, and then for food, food is there. Hey, the journey journey. When they my my spend my deeper, my spending, I think that they got four to five thousand dollars a week from Tuesday. Yeah, it's in Tuesday to now. And they are like the same people. Wow. Yeah, my spending about five thousand. And that's food and drinks. Yeah, yeah. five thousand Ghana. She's making up stuff. Yeah, right? five thousand Ghana CDs. Probably from where? Yeah, because we've gone to fine dining. Um, I've done like local. I went to what's what's that place? Uh, Mazara. Uh, um, uh, Asmera. Asmera. Okay, yeah, Asmera. Asmera. Like there, I did the buffet. That was like five hundred before with the taxes was like seven hundred something. So, and I did the buffet. I only ate like three plates. Of food. Um, and then of course my hair. Hey, that got braided. Um, the last, my last, <laughs> last two videos we had a conversation about this. Yeah. But anyway, you for my hair, for my hair, I spent about so fourteen thousand four hundred for my hair. Guys, you see, you guys will see. But the it's a home service. You see that? I had a home service. You see that? That includes the hair. That's extremely expensive. Um, but for someone who lives in, like, not lives in Ghana, but who comes from, like, proper Ghanaian, with but family and friends in Ghana, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be paying for such services. And if I went, no. okay, I'll, let me be fair. If I probably went to Madina, my hairstylist in Madina, I probably would have paid less. But I didn't feel like going there, so I booked my home service lady to come and do my hair. Yeah. So that one she charged me 14. And then of course me, I like to tip. Everywhere I go, I tip, okay? So I tipped her also. And with the tip, it was like Probably I gave her 16. I gave her 1006. Because I tipped her with her apprentice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, if I tip fine, anywhere I want to tip. So tip me included in my food too. Yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we are not buying that one. We are burning that. <laughs> but next time I'm going to Kumasi to to try the Kumasi braid oh, to see they're how they're you know they're the price difference. This one we'll pick it up on this side because my and my cook, like because I'm a crown back. I don't know how I feel. I don't know how to express how I feel. Oh, but I understand. I understand the average. Like the, they will say that it's expensive, but also I feel like when someone do a good, I'll tell you this. I tried going to someone else to do my hair. They told me that they couldn't grab my hair. My hair was pretty short. Uh -huh. But yeah, but my lady, obey this and more, even better. My lady, she she can grab every strand of my hair. So the hair is nice. The, the hair is nice, the hair they should do a good job. So yeah, that's yeah, why I'm not yeah. complaining. But my sisters, they they'll say mm, it's out of the way. It's the extortion. Because they know that ordinary Ghanaians will not pay that. Why? Okay, let's move on. Because we're there to ask you there. <laughs> so averagely, you know, how much do you spend in your day? In your day? Oh, it depends. So in a day I can spend if some days I don't do nothing. Did so. you talk about your rent? I did. Yeah. I said the rent I, I paid. O overall. Yeah, overall I've spent I've spent like um seven hundred. Seven hundred dollars. That one is in dollars. So in in Ghana rent, if you're booking Airbnb, it's no CDs. Mm. Only in dollars oh, you yeah, pay. Yeah, you only have to pay in dollars. If it's not in dollars, I don't know how you're going to. They, they only take dollars. Yeah. Even cars, you buy cars. The cars is dollars too. Not, not see this. Okay. Um, so, let's just summarize everything. Do you think you can do that? Do I think that I can personally live in Ghana? Me? Right now, the answer is no. I can't live in Ghana right now because I don't have any established business at the moment. 
in Ghana, I'm working on something, but I don't have an established business. Um, I haven't finished completing my house I'm building. So I personally cannot live in Ghana, especially if I have to live here. Um, and if I don't have any job or like a career that is paying me in dollars or making similar or close to the money that I'm making, I don't think I can personally live in Ghana at the moment. Now, if you have established businesses and you making money out of the businesses and you can afford the lifestyle, can you live in Ghana? Yeah, we see each other is living in Ghana. He's making the money so he can live in Ghana and live comfortably. But again, like I said, the average Ghanaian Mm, yeah. So what do you, what do you have the average Ghanaian cannot. What do you have to say about the current exodus of Ghana? If you were living in Ghana, mm -hmm. would you Japan? Me. Yes. No. With the current cost of living. I want from the home that was made, I want Japan. Japan is there. Relocate. Oh, Japan like relocate. Oh, okay, okay. Guys, sorry, I was thinking something else. <laughs> when you said Japan, was like, way on your local, so she doesn't understand this now. I was thinking something else. Oh, and with the current situation, if I was living in Ghana, yeah. I, let's have? say, let's say if I was living here and like with the current situation, okay, let's just say if I didn't come from, my parents are not rich, but my parents are also not. Okay. They're not like they like. Yeah, in the middle. They're in the middle, okay. So that I would say I probably would like to stay, you know, because I'll have the opportunities. But if like I was like in like the kind of like the lower the bottom, the bottom end, um yeah, I probably would be like telling somebody come and take me. I'll find your old white man. But you know and run away. You know a lot of Ghanaians are really Of course, know. yeah. And it's not just you know uh, the uneducated ones. Oh, even the educated ones. ones. Yes, yes. Even the educated ones. Because yes. I've helped. Like we have. A, I have a friend that um, you know, he helps a lot of like college grads, like get you know placements in schools, um, and then you know go to school, get the opportunity to go to school abroad in the U.S. or Canada, mm -hmm. and then you know most of them, some of them stay. You know, some of them don't come back. So, I mean, yeah. If, Challenge. When your opportunity, me, I say I will never tell anybody. Don't travel abroad. Go experience it. Make. I would say the wisest thing you can do is go make the money. And if you make the money and you want to establish a business, establish. Because there's money to be made in Ghana. If you can establish a business, you can make it. Because Ghanaians, they like to chill. They like to eat. They like to. They they like they like fanciness. So. Onions can I be there? Yeah, that's it. You just enjoy your life. Cause Ghana is more like the relax. You come, you can relax. I think the last year alone, you know, yes, it's me. I work with the health system, yeah. so I get the opportunity to work the health system. For the last two years, open facility. The Ghana health services in the south. Yes, it's me. So now we are doing the skill to work. Mm -hmm. October. And then you can think you can do one. Yeah. And then even in Canada too, you see the PR uh, something else that I've written the 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 way. So anyway, it's not PR. Um uh, where you can relocate with your entire family. Mm -hmm. There is a, a grading system that you need to get a certain number of points. Mm -hmm. Um they look at the education background, you know, yeah. age, things that you know, those things that uh, number of languages you yeah. can speak, you can speak French and mm -hmm. plus. Mm -hmm. So we have a grading system. If you fall within um, a certain number, uh, yeah, if you can really they can give you the documents to go and leave there with your family. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, that's what I'm saying. It's not just anybody else. Like when were the days when maybe they are going to a rest? Yeah, yeah, they are yeah, yeah, out and then they are stranded. People are stranded still. Mm -hmm. However, they are moving through legal means. Mm 
Yeah. Right? Even though they have to forward documents they have, it's when they get the they are they line be down. Yeah. Things, they are not apart. So they don't find only illiterate women but for I think yeah, more educated educated people. Ones. Yeah. They are going to school and how to school and back deal. So me personally I don't know how to feel about it because if we have the quality you all relocating because of this thing. There are no jobs, blah 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 blah. blah. Then who says we have to build that? And that's what I wanted to pick on with you. Like, what do you think about the situation? I always say that us, right, the younger generation, we are right now. We are like the future leaders, right? So as we have experienced like all the bad things here, or you know the good and the bad, the ugly, all of it. We have experienced the ups and downs. Once you relocate to another country, it's our duty, right, to come back and try to build and be better leaders. Because if we're not coming back to build and be better leaders, then eventually it's going to get to a point where um, there'll be nothing for us. Because I always look at it like this. Yeah, we can complain as much as we want. We can say, you know, all the ups and downs, all the negative things that has to do. Ghana is a great place to be at. If the if the Lebanese, I hear they're making it. If the Iranians, I hear they're making it. Why can't we make it, right? And I know that the system is not always fair because we don't have the money. They have the money, so they're able to establish take over, take over businesses and you know establish, and they are generating the income. So if they can do it, we can also do it. That's why sometimes I'll say like I applaud Cheddar for his work that he do, um, or he's doing. You know, doesn't matter how he guys money. That is not my business. But at the same time, he's creating, he's creating business, business and opportunities for people. Yeah. He's not saying, and that's somebody that has lived abroad before. He can say, okay, well, I keep my business in in the UK and just whatever. But he's brought it down here. His own properties. He's giving other people the opportunity to have businesses and you know, or like work. You know and stuff like that so if we're just gonna think about only the negative and be like oh you know i'm gonna move and go to america or canada and i'm never coming back then yeah your, your siblings your cousins remember you have cousins who are not educated that probably still here in the village or whatever mm-hmm. and what's left for them and i think that it's also about time that everybody's so focused in Accra that we forget about the rural areas we have to learn to develop our rural areas so that we can create opportunity. And that's why Christ like packed. Because there's so people are moving there. from the village to the city to make it. If we can also generate like, you know, or develop, develop other other parts of, part of, of Ghana, Ghana. Yeah. I think the economy will also yes. be way better too. Yeah. Yes. Talking about systems, how do you feel about the current system? Do you think that we have the structure for the economy? Even if mm-hmm. you have to pay for the health care, maybe the mm-hmm. system to maybe support you with the payment, if you have to go get stuff like loans and words like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I, I don't think, okay. In this interview, I'm going to be a little bit biased, so it's not going to be like trying to bash down at all. But I think that majority of African countries, there's no structure when it comes to like, you know, um, like loan services, healthcare, you know, like the, the structure, education wise, the structure is not there. Um, only a few, maybe Africa, I'll say like South Africa probably has a little bit of that structure, but Ghana, Nigeria, compared to those like West Africa, most West African countries don't have the structure, right? Um, and the reason is being that it's something that we probably never started with, where now I see like now they have like the Ghana card. Right, which is supposed to be kind of like connected to like kind of like your social security. So I think that at the moment the structure is not there, but are they working on the structure? I think that they're trying now. If the government can all put their mind together and not be like, oh, this party and this party, and they somebody can come and continue the work that somebody has started and keep pushing it, I think that eventually there can be a structure. So for instance, like if you're in Ghana, you're trying to buy a car. You know, I'm gonna say car because I sell cars. Too. Um, it's hard if you if you don't have the cash, you can't buy the car. You can't buy a new car because there's no loan system unless like you have 
um, a bank that is willing to give you the loan, but you have to have a collateral. And it's not like a low collateral, like you need a heavy collateral to put down, they give you like a hundred thousand. And you have to put down, I think, down payment or something like that. So, and um, for that, it's hard. The interest, the interest rate is also high. Because Ghana, we don't have a credit system where it's like, okay, somebody's bank is just based on their credit score. So if you have good credit, it doesn't have to make like a lot of money. But if you can maintain a good credit score, just like in the US, like you can make like 60,000, you can have like 800, you know, credit score and any bank will give you a loan just because, you know, they know that you're good at paying your, you know, your payment. So the system did see it. They have a long way to go. Um, it's not favorable to everyone, but you know, you guys make it do. But anyway, you said one important thing that normally um, when people get the opportunity to tra travel outside Canada, mm -hmm. not people back at you mm -hmm. get the opportunity to travel travel outside. Especially for education and also in their professional field, mm -hmm. it's expected that they, you know, upgrade or improve on whatever they went to yeah. and then come back to England. But do we see that? Because I feel like most of the people in the high position, it's not like they haven't traveled, they don't travel, they do. They, in fact, they have the diploma, mm -hmm. the diplomatic passport, and they get to travel around with yeah. important people. And go to places that we ordinary citizens have not yet yeah. for. How do they then come back and treat us so that we look at the the roads and then look at the the passenger how, how do you the passenger bridge, the one at Madonna, have you seen that? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. And then our year bridge to say they are here for walking marathon. Just to cross over uh Road, you know? Yeah. Why your steps? Basically, to have all yeah, heaven. Yeah. This is Why your steps? Basically, to have all heaven and back just to cross road. Yeah. Is that what they see when they travel out? Like, I do not understand. So, do you feel like it's true? That's what's supposed to happen, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like that's what is happening because they get the opportunity. They go. They just go and enjoy. They come back and. It's like we keep more activated. Um, I would say that sometimes I feel like it's greed. Is that what they're doing? Well, I feel like sometimes like... I don't think that's what it is, but I think that sometimes greed also take over. And not only greed, I also feel like you know how they say that when somebody has not seen money mm -hmm. and they see money and they get to the place that they see the money, they can either be selfish. Or they can be very nice, right? But majority of them are very selfish. Like, you know, they get the money now, they feel like, oh, nobody matters. It's just them and their family. But again, like I said, that's why, as like young generation, as we are complaining, what are we gonna do to, you know, make that change? Like, we have to be the chain makers. Like, if we don't like what the elders or like people ahead of us have done, yeah. once. We be, we get the opportunity to be in those positions. Is our due diligence to make sure that we implement, like yeah. we do the things that we complain we, about. We have a lot of responsibility. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be like the bearer of bad news or negativity. Yeah. But to be honest, I feel like those are the they are real representation of those at the party mm -hmm. because. Um, when you are not in power or you are not in any position of influence, you have the sense, you think very well, you have good judgment, you know what is right from wrong, you know what should be done, why it didn't done this way, I would have done it this way. And we have a lot to say, right? But immediately we are voted into power, it becomes something else. I don't know if it's a spirit or I don't know what happens when we are at the top. Well, I haven't been there yet, so I wouldn't know, but that is how I feel, you see. And so, at the end of the day, you can find a young man who is inspiring with his words, with his work, you know, with character, but the person, you know, finally gets into power and turns into something else. That's my disappointment. So, 
you are even thinking a lot of people you meet good uh, role models and mentors and then you say oh, I think you should get into more we need people like you to help build a better than I do but since I don't think it's them like I think it's the person that is is factoring the so for instance like you can pay me to do a project you give me the idea to do the project but when I take the money to go do the project I can change the idea right but it will reflect on you because you are the one that suggested the project or you are the one that everybody sees you basically the face of the project right so for instance they pay people to make to, to, make, to do the road right I'm pretty sure they give them hefty money to make the road but that's the government or like that that's the person that contracted the person knows what material the contractor is going to use because the contractor can tell you just like how I'm building your house they can tell you that I bought this and this and this but that's why I'm saying that but those people are not empowered yes they are not empowered but we Ghanaians we are also the problem we need to do better yes even on our roads I always use this example like who 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 drive it will be able to say class say like we see me in the Akaka, but so big Gina now go now at Ah, I see so all driving power while we do here. Yeah, I feel like the structure is there. There's no structure. Like, for, like now we've lost like first gun of all where you know and empathetic. Like we care about people, you know, we care about reputation. But what would they say about me? Mm-hmm. You know, no, I can't do this. Thing. But now it's like we don't care. Yeah. You don't care, you understand? Before we live in community, to who we are there from now, we think about other people. But everybody's for themselves. Everybody's yeah. for themselves. Nobody cares. So, yeah. You know, whatever happens, my best friend is. Yeah. So, I think it's, you know, I think this is westernization. It's part of the impact yeah. of that on our society because. Yes. Uh, it's been an interesting one. I hope you enjoyed watching this as um, we enjoyed filming. And talking um, to you guys. Guys, she will definitely come back because you see her. Next time you guys see her, she will be shooting the US. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. You know, but we will respect ourselves. Yes. Yes, for now. Yes. So, Until next time, make yes, sure. Um, thank you so much. No worries. Thank you for having me. me. Yes. Yeah. And so, uh, make let's, sure to subscribe. Let's let make let's make a date. Mm-hmm. I'll see you on my next video. Your crown will be out. Bye bye. Oh, by the way, do not forget to subscribe. Yes. And make sure you like and make sure you share. Okay. Until next time. Bye.